So recently I decided to get me a set of two new Othernet Dreamcatchers. I'm super excited. I wanted these for a long time. Um, don't worry, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you're not the only one. At the end of this video, you will know everything I know about these fun little interesting things. Okay, now let's try to lay some foundation here and ask some questions. First, what is this actual other Dream Dreamcatcher device? Well, this is a portable satellite receiver with a small single board computer all on the same PCB. Kind of like marrying a small PC with a radio receiver. Next question, how does it work? Just like setting up a satellite dish, you connect the receiver to the LNB, the antenna, with a coax cable get the right azimuth and point the antenna towards the satellite and power up the device. Tweak it a little bit and a little bit more and you should be good to go. It takes a little bit of, of work but um, I'm sure uh, with the right directions from the uh, website you'll be able to figure it out. What is this good for? Uh, the company's website does a good job explaining all the current possibilities, but in a nutshell, it is good for access to news, weather, uh, especially where there's no access to the internet uh, during disaster or complete comes blackout. Maybe soldiers deployed to a remote location where there is no immediate access to the internet or the news. But before you get too excited, no, you cannot install Facebook, Instagram, Tweet, or watch YouTube. You're limited to 200 megabyte daily data download. Now, no, you cannot choose what you want. This is a one-way conversation, so to speak. And so, now, what is the way forward? That, I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. I apologize for the long intro, but I feel the need for such details for those who never heard of this device. With that, Let's get to work. So this is the Dreamcatcher version 3.05 board. They are currently available for $69 on the Othernet website. Right here you see the Wi-Fi dongle, the micro USB power plug right here in the corner. This is the power button to the right and the PB1 button. I will explain the purpose of the AP button later on in this video. The Dreamcatcher board turns on automatically as soon as you plug it in. You do not have to push this button to start it. I however make it a habit to push this button to shut it down. I don't know if it makes any difference. Here in the corner you see the SD card slot for content storage. The second slot is for the system or the distro that you will be using whether it be Skylark or Armbian. The other components that you may find in your package are the coax coupler and the LNB. As you can see, I have not mounted mine on a fixed location yet, but it acquires signal and gets satellite lock within a few seconds. For my setup, I am using a 32GB SD card, but any high quality SD card larger than 4GB should work. Go ahead and insert your formatted SD card into your PC and head over to Othernet web page and download Skylark image. I am using version 5.8. As far as I know, the only difference between 5.8 and version 5.7 is the correction to the frequency and the beam. So if you're using anything other than 5.8, you will need to manually input the frequency and the beam. Your next step is downloading Etcher. If you don't already have it, go ahead and download it. Etcher will allow you to write Skylark image into your SD card. This process takes about a minute. Once complete, Go ahead and remove the SD card from your PC and insert it in the proper slot in your Dreamcatcher board 
and allow it about a minute to boot up. You will know that the system is ready when you see a new SSID appearing in your available Wi-Fi networks. The name of the SSID is OtherNet. Go ahead and select it. No Wi-Fi password will be required. Once connected, open up your web browser and type in 10.0.0.1. This will bring up Skylar GUI and you'll be asked to enter a username and a password. The username is OtherNet. The password is OtherNet. That is the administrator account. If you enter guest as a username and a password, you will have limited access and you will not be able to perform any administrator functions. Now, let's check out what is available for us in our net. Before getting started, we need to check and see if we have a signal lock. We do that by clicking on Tuner. The satellite tab will show you the proper frequency and the beam for your location. Change it accordingly. For North America, the frequency is 12.1032 and the beam is 164. I am located in the US. I can only vouch that this works in America. If any of you guys is located in Europe and would like to share their experience, please feel free to put it in the comments section below. In the status tab, you will see your signal to noise ratio. The lock status must say yes. You will also see the RSSI value. At the very bottom, you will see the files being downloaded. This is basically all the news, Wikipedia library, and weather related files, which will be seen next. As I mentioned earlier, this is some Wikipedia content. Files are still being downloaded, so I may have a little more than what you see in here later on. Keep in mind that this is all pre-selected content and may not be something that will be interesting to you. Right here, you have the world weather map. I can't seem to get enough of this part and don't ask me why, I just don't have an answer for you. Here you get a radio station. No, you won't have the luxury of selecting from multiple radio stations. It's always been an African radio broadcast, but given the circumstances, I'm happy with anything I get if it comes to that. Right here, you see the news. Uh, they are supposed to be updated on a daily basis. At least it's been that way since I have this running. Now, let's take a look at the network menu. This is an important part if you want to change OtherNet SSID, you'll log in, username and password, or to connect the Dreamcatcher board to your Wi-Fi network. You do not have to change any of this. This is optional, but I would recommend connecting your Dreamcatcher to your home Wi-Fi. That way you don't have to constantly disconnect from your home Wi-Fi and connect to OtherNet, or vice versa. As you can see here under the Network Mode tab, you can change the host name and password. Under the Hotspot tab, you can change Ethernet SSID that is normally broadcasted. You can name it whatever you like and assign a password or leave it blank. Right here under Wi-Fi is where you connect your home Wi-Fi. Simply enter your home Wi-Fi SSID and password and go back to network mode and change Wi-Fi mode to say connect to Wi-Fi router. Allow the system to reboot and log into your home wireless router and locate your IP address associated with OtherNet. 
Then open your web browser and enter the IP address assigned to your Dreamcatcher board. Now you can log in from any device in your home just by typing the assigned IP address in your web browser. To switch back to AP mode, all you have to do is press and release the PB1 button on your Dreamcatcher board. The PB1 button is located next to the power button. To reset the network settings to default settings, press the PB1 twice in less than 7 seconds. To clear everything, including your downloaded data, press the PB1 three times in less than 7 seconds. This last step is basically a complete factory reset. At this point, I'm sure you get the idea. I'm not going to waste your time clicking on every menu item, so I will just quickly fast forward through this part. Moving on to another fun part of having these Dreamcatcher boards. Nowadays, you can send text messages with most pro DMR push to talk radios, but I still see the fun in being able to do this. Before I get into this part, I have to remind my viewers that this is only intended for licensed individuals and operators. You must abide by all the laws and regulations in your country before executing any type of radio transmission. Now that we get that out of the way, let's head over to OtherNet website. As we did earlier with Skylark, download and extract Armbian image to an SD card using Etcher. Insert the SD card in the proper slot of your Dreamcatcher board. Next, you will need to download PuTTY. You can download it directly from PuTTY.org. After downloading PuTTY, go ahead and install it in your computer and connect your Dreamcatcher board to any available USB port in your computer. Now you should be ready for the next step. First, we need to identify the COM port that the Dreamcatcher board is using. To find the correct COM port in a Windows PC, go to Device Manager and find the port that says PI USB to Serial. Note that port number. Now open up PuTTY, select Serial and enter the proper COM port and hit Open. Login as username root, password is 1234. You will be asked to enter the password twice. Enter a new password and confirm it. Create a username and password. Next, you need to connect Armbian to the internet. As soon as you get connected, you will need to update and upgrade your system just like we always do in any Linux. Now that you made it this far, I'm going to take the back seat and let this video self guide you and I will catch up with you here shortly.
In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to send messages between two Dreamcatcher boards. The steps for setting up the second board are the same as what we did to install the chat script in this video. All you need to do is figure out the COM port for the second Dreamcatcher board, enter the same frequency, and you will be good to go. Now you can send and receive text messages between two Dreamcatchers. I choose not to send or receive messages in this demonstration, but I assure you that this worked. If any of you guys is having problems setting up their Dreamcatcher board, feel free to reach out anytime. For demonstration purposes, I connected both boards to the same PC, but this is obviously not the purpose of using chat. Each Dreamcatcher board should be connected to a separate computer and the messages will be sent back and forth over a long distance. I am planning to test it in a future video to see the range of transmission, hopefully when this COVID-19 shutdown is over. Lastly, if you like the content of this video and you find it useful, please like and subscribe. Your encouragement fuels my motivation. See you in the next video. Thank you.